this, I, I tell my wife every time I teach this particular lecture, like this is such a snooze fest. So I've decided this time, especially because we're trying to squeeze it in a little bit, let's only talk about the stuff that matters and let's try and make it a bit more fun. So this was what the outline looked like as of uh, October 22nd, or you know, a few days ago. This is what it's gonna be today. We're gonna start by watching uh, Primogen, who is somebody that I just found, like uh, one of my friends showed me him uh, a little bit ago. We're gonna still focus heavily on the core concepts of OO, because that's something that actually matters you guys think that you know what OO is. You don't even know what the concepts are. But you've written a lot of OO, so it's gonna be familiar. Uh, then we're gonna look at this kind of bad blog, uh, but it shows an interesting point. Uh, we're gonna skip prototype-based stuff entirely, talk a little bit about this language called Smalltalk that you've probably never heard of, but is extremely influential. So, with that said, welcome to Professor reacts to, Primogen reacts to, functional programming is not better than OOP. Please like and subscribe. One of my most successful videos on this channel so far compares functional and object-oriented programming. This is an interesting topic, and clearly not just to me. But there's more to this debate than we discussed in that episode. This is one of those debates that, to be honest, seems a little weird to me. I think I could have agreed with this, this, this take not too long ago. Real talk, I, I really do think I would be on the, this is. Yeah, so we're, we're currently talking about the debate between functional versus OO. Which one is better? Primogen is a Netflix senior engineer. He's got like two decades of experience writing code. He's also like a Twitch streamer that, you know, is kind of funny. So um, we're, we're going to watch just a little bit of this strange debate kind of talk. Maybe if you would have asked me five years ago, seven years ago, hey, Prime, what do you think on the functional versus non-functional debate? I would probably take, I'd probably have some stupid ass take, right? This was probably during the height, maybe if you went eight years ago, my height of loving RxJS, and I'd have been like, reactive functional programming is so great. Right, but I really don't even know what functional programming is at that point. Still don't even really know what it is. I, you know, I'm, re I'm just gonna be straight up here. Does anybody really know what functional programming is? You know, that's kind of hard. Procedural programming is greater than everything else. What is procedural programming? Is it like scripting pretty much? No, no, it's different than that. You guys have all written procedural code. C. C is procedural. It means you use a function. A procedure is called a function. If you wrote functions, you've done procedural code. He's using it in a slightly different sense in that everyone talks about Rust being procedural. They just say that because they want to pretend it's like C. Anyway. My stance is not that I hate functional programming and love OO, or vice versa, but rather that I think of each of these approaches as tools, rather than things to go to war about. So, so I, I'm not even, so this whole idea of saying that a language paradigm is a tool is an interesting take to begin with, right? Uh, and it's a wrong take. A paradigm, <laughs> a paradigm is a perspective. Functional programming is not a tool, it's a way to look at a problem then the language itself is a tool that you can use to solve that problem. But the paradigm is a perspective. Because is it a tool or is one objectively better than the other? Because they're both, they're both an equalizer, if you will. They both simply yeah, this, take- this, I, I disagree with a lot of this. It's kind of nonsense. Okay, I like the framing. Oh, well. I think we can skip through actually Others a lot of this. Versus oriented is like, the, uh, uh, that something is leaning towards or going towards it. Uh, anyways, uh, I could agree with this take so far. Okay, me and this Dave guy may have changed. This is an interesting insight and certainly bears some relationship to how I usually design systems, even though, as I've said before, I think of my approach as more object-oriented than functional. Definitions of OO usually include abstraction, which allows us to hide unnecessary details, inherit... I don't like that word, okay? 
I'm a 1D programmer. I like one level of abstraction. Anytime you're working with an abstraction of abstractions, it becomes this insanity to refactor. Like the moment you need to change something, you have to change so many fundamental assum assumptions. Wow, that's not even assumptions about what you've done. And it just like blows things up. I find that abstractions, though they look nice in their end product, like, you know, you tell me, tell me this does not feel good. When you come up with an abstraction that when you write it out in like its final line, it's like one line of code and you're like, dot, do that, dot, done that. Boom, look at Raise of hands, how many people agree with that statement? <laughs> you reach that point, it's so nice. Um, how good I am, you know, you feel it so smooth. And then somebody comes along and is like, uh, I need to add one. And you're just like, my life. I hate myself and I hate everything here and I'm going to quit my job. Right? Like, it's just like you somehow ruin your life over like the simplest request because you think you have something great. And then all of a sudden you're completely wrong because your abstraction just slightly changes. And now you're refactoring an abstraction that's built on an abstraction that's built on an abstraction and your whole life crumbles. I hate it. Since defining one type of thing in terms of another, Polymorphism, being able to access things of different types through the same interface. And encapsulation, which allows us to hide. Polymorphism isn't just an OO principle, right? I mean, polymorphism. All right. We have our first definition of OO. We have four principles that make up what is object oriented abstraction, inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation. And with that, let's actually swap back to slides.